in this example, what we want to do is you look at some real life data and try to decide um, what the rates of change mean uh, in, in the context. Now you can see along the vertical, it says average temperature TX in degrees Fahrenheit. This is for Albany, New York. Um, and then over here, I've got T in months. Now let me just interpret a couple dots. This first dot, it looks like it to be like 0 032. I would say that probably means that the average temperature in Albany, New York during January is about 32 degrees. If I go over to um, this dot right here, I would say that probably means um, that the average temperature in May in Albany, New York um, looks to be about 45 degrees, etc. Now they're not actually asking us um, to interpret dots. They want to know when is the function increasing, when is it decreasing, and find some average rates of change and see what's going on. So let's start asking questions. This says, when is t increasing? This is a question right here. Well, remember, a function is increasing when you go from left to right when you're going up. So at the very beginning, I go down first, so I'm not going um, increasing. But now I'm going up from left to right until I hit the peak. And then after that, I start to decrease. Now, whenever someone asks me when, in an algebra class or a function setting, they're always asking for the t values or the x values, the independent variable. So I'm not going to go from this dot to this dot. Um, I am going to say when, well, when t starts at 1, the function start to, starts to increase. So I'm going to go 1 is less than t is less than, and when it hits 7, um, it stops increasing. And so that's the answer I'll put. Um, I could have put 1 is less than or equal to t. Um, it really doesn't matter because at the, at the top and the bottom, it's not increasing or decreasing. Now, when is t decreasing? Well, for this graph, that's pretty much all the other times. From the very beginning until t equals 1, the graph is going down. Now the graph is going up, 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 up again until I hit the peak. And then the graph starts to decrease again as I go from left to right. So I'm going down like this. So if I'm going to answer this one, I'm going to say when 0 is less than t is less than 1. Um, and using a sentence can help here, as well as when uh, 7 is less than t is less than 12. So I get an answer there. Now, the next thing they say is an average rate of change is always a slope, usually written like delta y over delta x. Using units can help explain them in context. Now this says, what is the average rate of change of t between t equals 1 and t equals 3? Well, average rate of change is always the slope between two points. And what I want to do is just connect up a line between those two points. Okay, can you stand please? All right. There we go. And what they're asking for is the average rate of change and probably an interpretation. So what I'm going to do is try to put this all in a note and see what I can happen. Um, I want delta t over delta little t is going to be, let's see here, change in big T. Um, that look, looks to be, I'm thinking about 33 minus maybe 21 divided by 3 minus 1 equals, I think that's 12 over 2, that's 6. That's 6 degrees per month, which means on average, the, temp the temperature rose 6 degrees per month, about 6 degrees every month. And we already said it's on average, so I'm happy with that. I like that. All right, let's turn that little line off. And let's look at the last question. What is the average rate of change of t between t equals 5 and t equals 11? So I think I have something here that'll do that for us too. The average rate of change is always the slope of the line between two points. In this case, it's the slope of the line between these two points. And we'll try this again. Uh, so delta big T divided by delta little t equals, let's see, it's always going to be ending y value, which looks like about 38 minus, um, I'm thinking that looks like about 56 maybe. Let me just double check that, 38 and 56, I think that's right. Um, and then I want 11 minus 5. 
So this looks to be something like minus 18 over 4 equals negative 4.5 um, degrees per month. Now, notice by the way, the average rate of change is negative, but that doesn't mean that actually the function was always going down. That just means on average from this point to this point, uh, the temperature was, was decreasing. You can see that it actually went up quite a bit. It just went down a lot more. Um, so let's finish writing down here, which means on average, the temperature fell uh, 4.5 degrees. I can say right degrees, degrees every month. And that's basically the way we're going to be interpreting um, increasing, decreasing, and average rates of change um, when it, sometimes when it's positive and sometimes when it's negative.